Hello and welcome to our next episode of UGC by Talks podcast brought by UGC Ninja. Today we have a special guest, Alisa Barro uh, from D'Angelo Games. As a user acquisition, she will share her thoughts and ideas on how they promote their games. What you need to know, D'Angelo Games was found in 2016 following the acquisition of two studios, has been at the forefront of creating engaging and immersive social gaming experiences, with a focus on casino games, card games, casual games, and a diverse portfolio of titles, D'Angelo Games have carved a niche for itself in a competitive gaming landscape. Let's hear Alisa out. Can you share your approach to innovating creatives in the user acquisition? When we think innovation, we tend to think AI, but the reality is even if we use it from time to time, so we haven't integrated fully in the process. And what we do uh, at Tangelo is we work very closely with our creative team and our artists, involve them in the whole thinking development. We try also to train them and make them know better about a UA to understand the performances and so therefore it helps a lot when we do brainstorming when we discuss together we look for references outside of gaming or mobile only uh, i think it's very important to have an open eye on what's going on in the world in terms of cinema music video clip are good examples you can find nice colors patterns design that you think mm, i'm attracted by that so i want to mix it <laughs> with my game with what i know from my creative knowledge from my data, from my audiences. So mixing those can lead to crazy ideas. Cool. As you mentioned, looking up to the movies, I'm just curious, uh, have you used the most popular trend uh, in the last year, the Barbie trends, into your creatives? We did a bit, but we used the pinky stuff. Like we have pink slots mm -hmm. uh, named Love Goddess. We have bingo games with pink cards, so mm. we can change also and play, yeah, <laughs> seasonality, whatever, big events. This is definitely worth a try. So this is how you you or develop concept ideas uh, that have a significant impact on the user acquisition campaigns is by looking outside even the industry of mobile apps and games, right? When we want to do very innovating new concept and we have time to create something crazy, this is my best way to do it. When in UA, sometimes you also need cheap, fast and efficient creatives. You need volume. So this way, I think I would tend for something a bit more easy. It's definitely looking at what your competitors are doing. If it's out there everywhere, it works somehow. You try to pick some elements. You think we work with your game or the concept you want to adapt to your game. Uh, that's easy and fast development usually. Even elements you see everywhere, you can just add it to your already best performing creative. It can put a tiny help, tiny different iteration. It can be a good way as well. Cool. And uh, if you can share, what is the usual ratio between like some innovative uh, creatives and some of your more classical approach? I would say if you produce five creative a week, it could be nice to have two new concepts and three iteration of your best. Sounds like a plan. What, for example, current trends are you observing in the user acquisition creators? I think after the big fake uh, ads wave we had uh, in the last years, players now are more shifting towards authenticity and user-generated content. They like to see real experience feedbacks from their fellow gamers. In terms of content, it shifts towards community. People, if inside your game you have uh, social experiences, then it's a nice content to push forwards. Just the fact you have communities that like to together around the game is definitely something we see because it's very important. I have noticed Monopoly is playing a lot around that as well. And more and more, not only UGC, but really community vibe is quality content. Cool. And you use uh, UGC like ads in your campaigns? We tried a bit, yes, uh, but we did it ourselves using platforms such as Fever. Because the thing is, it's 
also a cost. If you want it to be well done, you need to dedicate a proper test to it. So we did it in a shy way. We had actually good results in the level we're doing it. So that would be part of 2024 to invest more toward this and make it near work. That's the right approach when you first test it out yourself to understand more how it works, how much work it is to put it in as well and understand the nuances of it. Okay, if we say being ahead of the curve in such rapidly evolving field, uh, how do you approach this challenge? In terms of creative, there is definitely a almost daily benchmarking. It takes time, but it's important to see what others are doing. But also monitoring industry publication, going on conferences, staying in touch with other UAM networking, talking about what's going on in the market is the best way to do it, even within your team. Marketing or creative, if you want to implement new things, make sure they are known. You follow the trend, but they are also developed and produced uh, mm -hmm. quickly so you can keep in touch with the flow. So to stay ahead of the curve, you need to be in the curve as well with others and discuss how to go fast and grow fast. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I was also thinking sometimes based on an idea just because you're not keeping it for yourself or you're sharing with others, then new ideas can pop up and be like, oh, we can do better than what's already the best. Yes, sharing is scary. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always thought it's uh, better to move forward with like-minded people and sharing with each other ideas to grow together faster. One must have tool or resource for creative development and user acquisition that you use. <clears throat> Beside the strong data analytic tool we need in use, I'm still old school. I believe a good benchmarking tool mixed with a good artist is the best. Even if we have AI and it's a great help, you can, you know, think and produce at the same time. Best ideas still come from brainstorming are still the one that we are producing. Cool. A common misconception about the creatives in user acquisition. Sometimes people tend to think, oh, if my creative looks good, it's possible. I have put an attractive header, then it means it will work. But actually, I believe we need to put more thinking behind the concept. Some What works the best is when you make the user feel uh, an emotion. It's not only about catch, catching the user on the first seconds. At the end, it's way more than that because you need to go a bit deeper. And Sadly, outside in UA, you have a lot of ads that really can be shocking. I'm not going to name any company, but there is some when you have to make a choice between uh, leaving or staying with your husband when you see he's cheating on you. It's really touching the emotions, what you remember of these mm -hmm. ads is what you felt more than what you've seen in it. And there is other that make you feel good emotionally. And what are the best performing channels for you at the moment? Google is a very good one. And Unity also have shown very nice results for us. Great. And what type of uh, creative format do you usually using? We try to do a mix between videos and static. If we find a nice concept that works for video, we will pinpoint the elements and try to adapt it in the static and the other way won't work as well. And videos are taking over. It's always been a bit the case. And this is what I was assured of. But testing more and more static. I've seen also sometimes it works better on Facebook. We went back to the good old carousel format at some point and we had crazy performances. Don't be uh, so sure about static. They can come back strong. Well, uh, it's like fashion, right? It always comes back. So don't forget the regions. And what is your prediction for the next big trend in the user acquisition creatives. Definitely playables to me should come back uh, stronger because I think we have more and more tools out there that are helping the development of it because to be honest it's not the easiest format to develop not the cheapest as well uh, but I believe what could be new and trendy to find other way to do uh, interactive content maybe outside of playable or do playable that are, that goes a bit deeper just a simple you know gamification we know from now well thank you very much for joining us today and sharing your insights and see you soon bye My pleasure bye that was it for today thank you very much for watching till the end don't forget to like share comment and support us bisous, bisous. Merci beaucoup.